guys and welcome back to Ultimate Exotics. So those of you who know us at Ultimate Exotics, you'll know that we love our house snakes and we love working with all the different species of house snakes and also all their different morphs. So in today's video, we thought we'd have a look at the butter house snake morph, as this morph is probably one of the most popular morphs in house snakes. And it's one of those morphs that really uh, got people excited about house snakes um, all around the world in the reptile hobby. It was something different and something unusual, and it, they definitely have that wow factor with their bright colors. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to have a look at how the butter house snake morph came about. We're going to have a look at some of the uh, different types of butter house snakes. And then we're going to go and get some of our butter house snakes that we bred here at Ultimate Exotics. And we're going to have a look at some examples of some of the babies and some of the adults. Okay, so how the butter house snake came about was many years ago, what happened was that guys would, uh, they crossed an albino brown house snake to a green house snake. And now what happens is then some of the babies will come out a bit of a brownie color and then some more green. And what the guys did is they selected pairs of the greenest babies from that crossing, which are now 100% het albino, and which the guys then called uh, illumos. And which is quite unusual because normally you don't name uh, something uh, a het, uh, give it a morph name like illumo. But that name did stick in the reptile hobby. So the green het albinos were now called illumos. So what they then did is then they bred the the green hit 100 uh, the green 100% hit albinos together and that meant 25% of the babies would then become uh, would, would hopefully get 25% of the babies would hatch out albino green which is a butter so technically the butter house snake is an albino green so that was the original cross and then over many years they have been bred out uh, to more pure lines which is what we've done to more of the pure green lines the zambian greens so ultimately it becomes a um, albino green or albino zambian green house snake that makes the butter morph and um, there were two different lines that were bred there was the t minus uh, butter line so it was originally crossed with a t minus albino uh, then there was a t positive um, line as well and that was originally crossed with a t positive albino and then since then there's also been the hypo mixed into into it as well which gives you the especially in the t positive it's more obvious so it's a T positive Harbino. It wasn't done with a T negative, as the T negative Harbinos, um, they're very hard to, to see because there's so much dilution already, the Harpo didn't make much uh, of a difference apparently. So um, it's more obvious in the T positive. Um, so those are the different variations of butters and that's how they started. And over the years, they just keep getting better and they also vary within each other. So what I will show you as well with our babies is you get the, um, in the T negative butter, you get bright yellow variants and you can imagine the bright yellow is becoming is coming from the uh, the albinism in that green snake like we see with the albino white lips so white lip tree viper is bright green and then the albino version is bright yellow so the albino of a green snake is generally yellow and that's how we got those bright yellow butters out and then also there's um, within the t minus butters you get these bright orange ones and then you get some in between and the same with the t positive you can get some yellow t positives you can get some orange t positives so house snakes are very variable and there are var variations within the butter um, morph of house snake. But overall, like you're going to see with our babies, they are a striking house snake and they always have that wow factor. In any time you take uh, someone into the into your snake room or anything like that, you show them a butter house snake. The, as you pull it out, they're super bright and they always have that wow factor. And they definitely um, brought a lot of interest back to house snakes and sparked off a lot of interest around uh, the world in the reptile hobby so overall a great morph so now all we have left to do is have a look at some of our babies so let's go and get some babies we'll start having a look at them and then i'll also show you some of our adults okay so first up we have the t minus yellow butter house snake and as you can see this one is a few months old now and he is a beautiful uniform yellow color and he also has no pattern that the brown house snakes have or the capensis have these have got no pattern like the fuliginosis um, so ideally some of the butter house snakes that are bred do have pattern but ideally you're looking for a snake that has very little pattern throughout its body and often very bright colors like you can see with this snake and this is so this is the yellow variation and you can just see really beautiful little house snake they are so awesome these Butter house snakes, and you can just see how bright its color is, and overall a great snake. 
Okay, and here we have one around the same age, um, a few months old, same age as that uh, T minus yellow butter. This is the T minus orange butter, and you can just see the clear difference in how orange this baby is. He is absolutely awesome, and it's a personal preference. Uh, we find that yellow is very popular, but then some people also prefer the orange. And um, the orange and yellow is a polygenic trait, so it is selective bred so you get some that are very orange some that are very yellow and then some that are also in between the two colors so it can be lime bred and what's also cool is that um, if you breed an orange to a yellow you get out both yellow and orange babies and then some in between so that's also quite nice um, and then also what we find is that um, when sometimes we breed even a, a yellow to a yellow there's even orange babies that come out in between so it really is a mix, um, which makes it really exciting and even more uh, something to look forward to when working with these butter house snakes. But this guy is just such a beautiful orange color, bright orange. He's a, a really good example. Okay, so this here is the T positive butter house snake. And these came about the same way as the T negative butters, but the first crossing was done instead with the T positive albino house snake and they are very similar but you can see this has a darker color and um, we'll talk a little bit um, about why they're, they're darker. They, uh, the T negative butter and the T positive butter they're not compatible so if you breed the two together you're going to get um, probably green looking babies that are all double head for T positive albino and T negative albino um, but yeah the, the, the T basically what the T stands for when we talk about T minus or T positive is is that it represents um, tyrosinase, which is an enzyme uh, that is required in the synthesis of melanin, which is basically your dark pigment. And T-positive albinos have functional tyrosinase enzymes, which are required to synthesize melanin. So they have an overall darker color, whereas the T-negative, which then means basically no, uh, no tyrosinase, um, they don't have uh, that enzyme to synthesize uh, the dark melanin, so they're much brighter. Whereas these basically partially synthesize the, me the melanin, um, so they have a slightly darker color. So they are a little bit confusing. The easiest way to tell, it, tell though is the overall darker color. They have a darker pupil, almost black pupil, whereas the T negative have a bright red pupil. Now the house snakes, they, their pupil is hard to see because they have uh, a vertical pupil as they are mostly nocturnal. So the easiest way to tell is if you go in at night and you have a look at um, uh, with a torch you have a look at their pupil and then you can easily see a dark it'll either be with the t positive a dark ruby red or almost black and then the t negative will be much brighter so i hope that explains it but a beautiful snake nonetheless so next up we have the hypo t positive butter house snake and you can just see that it's very similar, has a darker orange color, like the T-positive butter house snakes, except it has this much lighter overall color, which is from the recessive hypo mutation, which is included in this uh, combination morph house snake. So it, uh, yeah, it's also beautiful. Um, it might not be everyone's you know favorite, but it is something that's unique and different. And they really, the video doesn't even do it justice when you see it in person. They really have a, a beautiful um, overall like pastel color to them, which is really awesome. Um, and yeah, they also vary like some are more yellow and then some are more, more orangey. But you can definitely see the hypo, um, especially when they first hatch, you can see a clear difference between the hypo and um, the, the hypo T positive butter and the straight T positive butter. And even as they grow, you can see a very clear difference. And here's also just one more last example. Uh, you can see the difference in color. This is more yellowy of the T positive hypo butter house snake. And again, you can see a little bit of pattern on the neck. Um, and like I said, that is quite common with butter house snakes. But yeah, ideally, I like to see them with no pattern. I think it's just one of the unique features of the butter house snakes. But they are variable and some do have a little bit of pattern like you can see in this individual. He's got a little bit there. But you can see how much uh, lighter he has an overall lighter like hue over him like a like a pastel hue um, from the harpo being mixed in with the t positive the t positive butter was quite a lot darker
but another beautiful example. Okay, and here we have one of my favorite snakes in our collection, and this is one of our T minus yellow butter house snakes. She is probably the most yellow one we have bred. She is just unbelievable. So she's an adult female, and she is just super yellow, as you can see. No pattern, very clean body. So she's a perfect example of what we try and achieve with our butter house snakes. And uh, she's just been such a great female all around. And you can just see how beautiful she is. I even think she is in the blue, which uh, means that she is about to shed. So she's normally even a bit brighter than this. And she, so she does have a little bit of a dull tinge to her. But you can still appreciate um, how yellow she is and how clean she is. And she's just overall an awesome, awesome snake. And the males are quite a bit smaller. We're going to have a look at one of the males now. Um, I'll show you one of the um, orange butter males just so you can see the contrast between the two, um, especially when they're older. But this female, she is just so impressive. And yeah, we hope to make many more like her because she is just such a good example of how they should look. Okay, so here we have our T minus orange butter house snake. Uh, this is a male, so you can see um, he is quite a bit smaller than the big uh, T minus yellow butter female we had looked at earlier. House snakes are like that. The males are sexually dimorphic. Their tails are much longer from the vent to the tip than females. And also they are quite significantly smaller. I'd say he's about half the size and they're the same age. Um, and you can just see the contrast at how orangey he is compared to her. And what's cool is, like I mentioned... You can breed this male to that female and half the babies will, or some babies will come out orange, some will come out yellow and some will be in between. But um, this is what makes these butter house snakes so popular. And you can just see the wow factor, how bright this snake is. It really is just so impressive. And it's one of the reasons why these snakes have really been, um, have put basically, have generated a lot of interest for house snakes where, um, interest is definitely due i mean they're such an incredible species so yeah overall really great and yeah it's kind of hard to show at exactly how bright these are but every time we take one of these out to show someone you know that you can just see the reaction straight away because they're so bright and impressive all right guys i hope you enjoyed seeing those beautiful butter house snakes that we have here at ultimate exotics and I hope in this video I managed to explain to you a little bit more about this morph so that you can better understand it and also understand the different varieties you can get of the butter house snake. But overall, you can just see how beautiful that house snake is, the butter house snake morph. And I think it's such a great morph and we really enjoyed working with them here at Ultimate Exotics. And I think it's been an excellent morph um, all around for house snakes in general. Um, with regards to the care of the butter house snakes, you care for them exactly the same as you would any other house snake. They're really easy to care for. And we've done a detailed video on the care of house snakes here at Ultimate Exotics. So what I'll do is I'll put a link below in the comments um, of that uh, video on the care of uh, house snakes and the butter house snakes. You can care for them exactly the same way as you do the other house snakes. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment below, and most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Keep well. Cheers.